Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this brief episode, I'm going to tell you about the Botter Planetarium Flip Mirror 2. After one of my previous videos where I mentioned that I had to take my diagonal off of my Schmidt Cassegrain every time I wanted to video, uh, one of the viewers, Christopher, told me about a product called the Flip Mirror that would allow you to attach an eyepiece and your camera at the same time. He didn't say which model he got, so I just searched on Google and the first one that popped up was the Botter Planetarium Flip Mirror 2. So I bought it and it came in this box with a plethora of rings and hex wrenches, none of which do anything from what I could tell. And so like many Botter Planetarium products, you have to buy several adapters to get them to work. I have a Botter Planetarium diagonal that I like very much, but I had to buy the nose piece and the eyepiece holder separately. So three parts to get it to work. Uh, but it's a very nice product and so is this flip mirror. It just took me quite a while to get it to work. It wasn't entirely the product's fault. I left right after I bought it and didn't have time to spend on it before Mars was at opposition, which is why I didn't use it. But now I finally have all the parts um, to allow it to work. I had to get the focusing eyepiece holder, one and a quarter inch T2. And I had to get this click lock. Um, and I had to get a Schmidt Cassegrain adapter. So when you add all that up, it was quite expensive. The flip mirror two by itself was $272 from High Point Scientific. The focusing eyepiece holder was $56. The click lock was $97. And the Deluxe Schmidt Cassegrain T2 adapter was $70. And all of that total is $495. <laughs> Which is a lot <laughs> for, a, for a diagonal. Um, and then I found out that um, they are also made by Omegon and by Apertura and both of those are about $100 and they come with the one and a quarter nose piece on them. Um, I can't speak for how well they work but uh, this one is certainly high quality like most of Botter Planetarium's products and as you can see I have an eyepiece in it and my camera attached with a three-ton Barlow I pointed it at some mountains in the distance and I was able to focus with the eyepiece and this camera. This camera is a crop sensor camera. I did put my full frame camera on it and it had some vignetting. And so that's a shame. I guess I could crop in if I wanted to use my full frame camera, um, but uh, I can use the crop frame camera on it with the eyepiece so very convenient and all you do is you put your eyepiece in and your camera on and there is a knob on the other side that you turn and when you turn it it flips the mirror whether you want to look in the eyepiece or use your camera this is the knob that you turn and it flips the mirror inside to direct the image to the eyepiece and then you turn it this way if you want the image to go to your camera. I could also use a planetary camera which I do have. I didn't use it the other night when I was filming the uh, Mars at opposition because it was 15 degrees and with that camera you had to plug it into a laptop and even with AC power the laptop doesn't last very long so I didn't chance it I just used my digital camera and I, I thought it did pretty well but I would like to try this out uh, if it ever clears up the sun is out now only because I'm filming this and it creates ugly shadows um, otherwise since Mars was at opposition it's been cloudy every single day it snowed twice it's been incredibly cold and I haven't seen a single star since the night I looked at Mars. 
And I was actually starting to get depressed that I haven't seen the sun, so I, I am happy to see it. But it'd be nice if I could see some stars at night too, and then I can try out the camera with the flip mirror, but I'm sure it'll work since I was able to focus it on a distant object. And this is the crop sensor camera. And, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, you do need a one and a quarter adapter to go on your T-ring if you're gonna use it this way. That's how I did it. I have a T-ring for my Sony camera, and then I have uh, screwed into it uh, one and a quarter nose piece that goes inside the three time Barlow and that's how I I film with, when I'm not using the flip mirror um, and then I can take that out and if I wanted to use this planetary camera which I do hope to um, this is a color camera it would just go in this three Tom Barlow like that. And then this USB-A to USB-B cable goes to the laptop. And this came with some software called Sky Capture. And you just record it to Sky Capture. I think you can record to SIR or to ABI. And then you just process it just like you would with anything else that you record on a digital camera. But... I just haven't had a chance to use it. I, I really bought it for um, auto guiding. It's an auto guider or a planetary camera. Um, but if it ever clears up, I'll try this out with the flip mirror too. The Botter Planetarium Flip Mirror 2 also has an opening at the bottom. So you can attach a spectroscope if you want to. A spectroscope is an instrument for uh, analyzing the wavelengths of light. So if you're a scientist astronomer, you can determine the makeup of stars and planets. I don't have one, but <laughs> if you have one, you can attach that too. So earlier I said that my Mead planetary camera used USB-A to USB-B and I thought, oh, you know what, I could use my 50 foot long USB A to B cable, but it's not. I don't even know what you call this attachment that goes into the camera. So I don't have a long enough cable. My thought was I could put the laptop in the garage and still use the planetary camera. But I, I can try to leave it out here until it dies, I guess. It's pretty cold, but um, just to test it out because there aren't too many clouds at the moment, so maybe I can test this out on Jupiter in just a minute. Okay, I have the Mead planetary camera attached to the flip mirror and Jupiter's in there, but it's so cold out here, I can't bear to touch the laptop. So I'm, I'm not gonna try it with the camera. I'll have to figure something else out, it's too cold. But I can take this planetary camera out and put Jupiter on my digital camera with the flip mirror. Okay, I got Jupiter in my crop sensor digital camera with the flip mirror. And if I flip it, I can look through the eyepiece. So it works, but it's so cold out here. I, I don't know how long I can look at it, <laughs> but I just wanted to demonstrate that it works. Okay, I went and put more clothes on. It's very cold tonight, and the sand's not that good. It's partly cloudy, but I just wanted to test this out. So I'm making a little video 
of Jupiter with the flip mirror and when Mars gets a little higher I'll get Mars too but it works great Mars doesn't look as good as it did in opposition, of course, but there it is on the back of my digital camera, my crop sensor camera, with the flip mirror and an eyepiece at the top. So everything works and it's great. Uh, I do have to stand on the ladder if I want to look on the eyepiece, but I, I had to at times anyway. and. It can't go to the zenith because it'll bump the um, the base if there's something at the zenith. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. The Botter Planetarium Flip Mirror 2. So long till next time. Sula signing off. <laughs>